So I don't know about you, but my mind was completely blown by last night's episode of The Flash. Completely blown. You you can't see me right now, but I'm doing a hand gesture that represents my mind being blown. But anyways, well let's recap and then we'll talk about all that good stuff. We start off 15 years ago with Flash and Reverse Flash coming out of the Speed Force, apparently time traveling from their time to this point in time. Both Flashes reach the Allen house, busting through the window and fighting around Nora. As the fighting continues, Reverse Flash suddenly heads straight for young Barry. In present time, Barry and Joe discuss their suspicions about Dr. Wells and just what his motives could be. And if he did want something, why would he be helping Barry in the first place? Joe says that Wells is being patient and they need to be patient too. In the distance, a bunch of bombs attach to parachutes descend upon the city, and Flash rushes in just in time to save a kid from an explosion. Back at Star Labs, Team Flash watches a video of the person responsible for the bombing. He calls himself the Trickster. Joe then tells us about the original Trickster who was arrested and put in Iron Heights 12 years ago. We continue with our flashback now and see that the Flash carried young Barry to safety, then sped off. Reverse Flash is running, then falls suddenly. He brings up Gideon who tells him he's lost his speed force. He removes his mask and it's Eobard Dawn, who looks nothing like Harrison Wells. Barry and Joe head to Iron Heights to talk to James Jesse, the first trickster. He's not helpful at first, but after hearing that someone is copying him, he tells them to check out his whole hideout. At his hideout, they have a close call with the booby trap but nothing else of use, as the young trickster has took everything. They go back to JSC explaining everything was taken. Jesse says he must have also taken the super big bomb he was saving for a special occasion. Barry shows him the young trickster's newest blog which makes him go crazy for a minute or two. Back at Star Labs, Team Flash tries to track down the young trickster, but Wells is definitely feeling some resentment as of late from Barry. This triggers another flashback, this time of a younger Wells sitting on the beach with his wife Tess. They talk about science and Wells tells her about his future plans for a lab which he wants to name after her. She suggests Star Labs because he's the only star she sees. How cute, right? But observing from a distance, and like a complete creeper, is Eobard Thorn. Iris meets the Flash at Jitters. She asks for help with finding Mason Bridge, but this conversation is interrupted by a new video from the young trickster, who says he has a bomb big enough to blow up a few blocks of the city. Flash speeds through the entire area but can't find the bomb. Wells realizes that this must be a trick. He tells Barry that, that there must be something else going on, but he ignores this and continues looking. Meanwhile on the other side of town, the new trickster is at Iron Heights, freeing the original trickster, and they also take in a hostage, Barry's dad. Back in the past, Wells and Tess drive home, not seeing the spike strip across the road. They drive over it, the tires blow and the car flips over. Wells survives, but Tess is badly hurt. He starts to call for help. He sees feet outside the car and begs her help. Eobard answers, this woman has been dead for centuries. Back in the present day, Barry is still worried about trusting Wells, but Joe reassures him that they can trust him enough to save his dad. Across town, Iris shows up for a formal event. She is served a glass of champagne by Jesse, dressed as a waiter. Axel is also disguised as a waiter. Turns out they poison the champagne. They have the antidote, but will only get it if they transfer all their money to the trickster's bank accounts. The Flash speeds in and shoves Jesse against the wall. While he's focused on Jesse, Axel gets behind him and attaches a bomb to the Flash's wrist. Jesse then explains that if he tries to remove it, or slows down to below 600 miles an hour, it will explode. Wells tells the Flash that it's possible to run through a wall if he vibrates at the correct frequency, leaving the bomb behind. Barry's unsure of this, but Wells calms him down, telling him to focus on running, to feel the lightning's power, to become one with the speed force. Barry sees a large truck ahead and runs through it, leaving the bomb on the other side. He then runs back, dosing everybody with the antidote and saving his father afterwards. We get another flashback. Wells crawls out of the car. Eobard throws him on the ground. Who are you, Wells asks. He says, my name is Eobard Thrawn. Eobard tells Wells that in 2020, Wells and his wife start the prodigal accelerator, but Eobard needs it to happen a bit sooner. He then attaches a device to Wells' chest, then to his own, and Eobard's face turns into Wells, and the real Wells appears to die. Back in present time, Eddie looks for Joe at the police station. Joe needs Eddie's help to stop Iris from looking for Mason Bridge, 
and to further convince him, the Flash runs in and reveals his identity to Eddie. Back in the past, the police arrive at the crash site. The body of the man who had been Harrison Wells is nowhere to be found, but the new Wells emerges from the car, and the police ask if he knows his name. He says, my name is Harrison Wells. So like I said, it was mind blowing, right? I don't think anybody saw that coming. The Eobard would take Dr. Wells' face and use it as his own face from now on? Yeah, I don't think uh, anybody saw that coming. If they did, they're obviously lying to you. But this does bring up some more questions that Barry even asked in the episode himself. Why has he been helping Barry? And why has he been such good friends with Cisco and Caitlin? And why has he helped Firestorm? He really went out of his way to help Firestorm. And even Iris, too. The other main question I had for weeks, which has still not been answered, is where is future Barry? He's obviously not in the future. So where is he at? Is he still stuck in the Speed Force somehow? Or is he just out in the world, hiding? Maybe he doesn't have his speed. I don't know. But let me know what you thought of the episode. Did you like the Dr. Wells twist, or were you wanting something different? Let me know, leave it down below, and while you're here, check out some of the other videos we have on the channel. We'd really appreciate it.